You was a paper chaser. You got the block on fire. Remain in a G to the moment you expire. Okay, yeah. Let's get into this video. Hi everyone, thanks for coming back to my channel. If you're new here, what's up? I am your fave nurse B. Let's talk about admissions. So I got this question from a viewer. Thank you so much. This is a great question to ask, especially for all my new nurses and nursing students. And if you are a new nurse or a nursing student or you just want to know, maybe you're just now getting into this type of healthcare. Let me know what type of questions that you have. I know a lot of people want more educational videos as far as like how to pass this class. I just, there's plenty of YouTubers who do a great job at doing that. Like I'm just not in that emotional like focused mindset to do educational videos yeah I just I'm not there right now so <sighs> you have better luck getting videos like this out of me so put that in the comment section so anyways I want to talk about what to expect when you're getting admissions into your facility so this is coming from my point of view as an LPN working in long-term care as well as skilled nursing facilities so First thing with an admission that you have to know is that a lot of facilities will not tell you that you're having an admission until like that person is like on their way to the facility. It's super freaking annoying. I know it is, but that's one thing you have to know. Also, typically when you're working in long term care, a lot of your admissions come in the afternoon. Well, mostly like the evening shift. So it's typically evening shift is like 2.30 to 11 o'clock. Of course, some some facilities have 12 hour shifts, yada, yada, yada. So usually like between like that 2.30 and like five o'clock, a lot of admissions come like around five o'clock dinner time. So, um, but you do get some admissions that come during the day or during the day, that's when you get a report from the hospital or the other facility that they came from. And then that person comes in pretty much like at the end of your day shift. So if you're working evening shift, you will get a lot of admissions, a lot of experiences working with um, admission patients. So admitting patients. So um, let me slow down, y'all. Something to think about with admissions is that typically a person is coming to your facility either from a hospital, another facility like a long-term care facility or assistant living facility and then sometimes, rarely, you'll get patients that are coming straight from home into your facility. So like again I said, this is coming from my point of view as an LPN that works in long-term care or skilled nursing facilities. So. They'll come from those different facilities and you will get something called report. So the nurse that's at the other facility or at the hospital, they're going to call you and be like, hey, we got this person coming and they're going to just give you a tire rundown of the patient. So usually more than likely you will have some type of paperwork in front of you. So what happens is whomever does admissions at your facility that you work in will already be in contact with that hospital, with social workers, with other people at that hospital, getting information from that patient, doing the intake, making sure that they can take that patient in based off the insurance and things like that and all the different diseases that they have, yada, yada, yada. They're already, they already checked through everything to bring that person to the facility. So they more than likely will already have something called discharge paperwork to give you. So usually you get the discharge paperwork before you even get the report or like right at the same time that you get report, you're able to see the discharge paperwork. So the discharge paperwork from that facility is going to show you basically everything that that facility did um, from the time they came into the facility, like the hospital, um, until the time they left. And if they're coming from another facility, it'll, it won't be exactly like from the time they came till now, but it'll give you like a, a brief idea of that patient their history, their allergies, their age, um, all the different, you know, diseases and conditions that they have. Um, it'll kind of give you a rundown of why they came into the facility. So they're admitting diagnosis into the hospital. Um, and then they'll give you like a good idea of the patient, especially their medications. So you'll have that in front of you, but then the nurse is still going to give you report. So that's very important that you pay attention to report and you need to ask certain questions. So they're going to give you like the age of the patient, you know, what their admitting diagnosis to the hospital was and what they did. So say for example, say for instance, they were admitted to the hospital with falls and, you know, generalized weakness. And while they were at the hospital, they found that the patient had a UTI, a urinary tract infection. And they're gonna, the nurse is gonna say, we treated the patient with, I don't know, IV antibiotics. And they're gonna continue, you know, being on Cipro for the next 10 days, yada, 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 yada. Um, this person has, they eat a regular diet, meaning that they eat a diet that's at the consistency of me and you. They eat thin liquids. They're going to tell you what their cold status is. They're going to tell you all these different things about the patient. 
you really want to make sure of course like the history and the age and all that that's important but like i said that's right there on the discharge paperwork you're going to know that you're going to know the meds all that what you really need to know is is that person experiencing pain remember pain is what the the sixth the set the the fifth the fifth vital sign yeah it's the <laughs> it's a vital sign you want to know hey is this patient are they having any pain um, if so, how are we treating their pain? Because it's important. You want to know. You want to know how to keep your patient comfortable. The next thing you want to know is what does their skin look like? I'm gonna be be honest. A lot of hospitals, from what I've seen, like they be like, oh, it's fine. But then when they get there, you be like, when they get to the facility, you're like, okay, it's a lot going on with this patient, and vice versa. I'm sure coming from the facility, like the long term care to hospitals the nurse from the uh, long-term care will tell the hospital like oh they're fine that like, there's nothing going on with their skin but then they find this whole like pressure sore on the back of them so it could be the same either way honestly but you want to know what their skin looks like are we doing treatments on this patient because you're going to do a full body assessment of the patient but you still want to get an idea of what's coming in to your facility um the next thing which is like super super important you want to know when was that patient's last bm or bowel movement this is important because I know from the facilities that I've worked at, you all know I'm an agency nurse, so I go to, I've been to over like, I don't know, 10 plus different facilities. I need to count how many facilities I've been to in this past year because I've been going hard this year. But the the main thing is bowel movements because you want to know that that patient at least had a bowel movement within the last three days. If it's anything past that, then more than likely that facility that you work in is not going to accept that patient because plenty of things can happen from a patient who has not had a, ba uh, a bowel movement and the biggest thing is like a bowel obstruction it can cause them to die okay so you want to make sure the patient has had a bowel movement ask them when was the last bowel movement okay if they don't tell you you ask them that when was the last bowel movement it's very important take note okay um so you want to know that and if at that point they tell you that hey, it's been six days you say you know what let me talk to somebody else. I don't think we can take this patient. And then, of course, you know, defer it to someone over you. Okay. So that's that. I just had that happen recently um, at a facility that I worked at as an agency nurse. So, and then the next thing that you want to look at um, is, of course, what are their behaviors? Are they, you know, agitated? Are they, you know, not talkative? Are they extremely talkative? Do they have anxiety? Are they fighting? Are they combative? Are they cooperative? Um, or there, you know, is there certain things going on with the patient that I, as a nurse who has never seen this patient, I need to know so that when they come in, I can kind of treat them a certain way. Not like you're harassing them or you're like discriminating, but you want to know if this person is combative, you want to be able as a nurse to tell your CNA, hey, this patient has had some issues at the hospital being combative. I want two of you all to go in there. If you want to go in there, make sure you let me know. We'll go in there together. That way you kind of know how to approach that patient, okay? If the patient is very, you know, they cry a lot. You want to know, okay, there's maybe I need to, you know, make sure this patient is feeling comfortable, asking them questions, just being a little softer with the patient. Things like that that you want to know because you want to know, okay, if they're having behavior issues or if they're having certain behaviors what have you all done at the hospital that's been effective because you want to do the same thing at that nursing home make it easier for yourself right so that's something else you want to ask about things that i asked i asked um do they have family now everything going on right now if you're watching this during you know 2020 um of course there's typically not a lot of family in facilities right now hospitals but i do ask do they have family because i want to know okay is family going to be coming with them um, should I be calling, you know, the husband or their daughter and things like that? I want to know, does this person have support? To me, that's important to know because I know, okay, at the end of the day, we, we deliver holistic care. And part of holistic care is not just caring for that patient, but also you have to understand as a nurse, you're also uh, caring in a certain way to the family, you know, that's that's taking care of that patient before they even came to you so it's it's important to know if your patient has support and if so who and kind of what the dynamics of that relationship is and sometimes the hospital can tell you like yeah you know she has a she has a husband but he he kind of like isn't really in here like i don't really know if they're together still but she is married but i've only seen the daughter that's important for you to know because you might see oh you're married and you might go in talking about something the, the, the patient's like no like me and my husband are not together so it's certain things you might want to know um just in my instance like for me that's what i like to know do they have support um so that's what you need to know as far as you know them coming into the facility of course 
what their diagnosis are and how have they been treating it how the patient is acting do they eat well if so how do they eat can they walk what's their uh, mobility is it one person assisting them two people assisting them because typically when they come from the hospital the they're on the stretcher the ambulance puts them on the bed and they keep it pushing and then hey what if it's dinner time or what if you need to get that patient's weight how are you going to transport them from the bed to the chair you want to know that am i going to need two people in there do i need a hoyer lift do i you know can the patient get up and just do their own thing you want to know this as soon as they come what is their mobility status and how are we going to you know move these patients especially if they have some type of orthopedic um diagnosis maybe they had a hip you know replacement something like that you want to know how the patient transfers you want to know what their cognitive abilities are. Are they alert and oriented to self or are they alert and oriented to self and time, to self, time and place, all these different things. You want to know the cognitive status of your patient. Again, this goes into play with how you care for your patient, not well, the delivery of your care. OK, you want to know these things because, again, it's not just you taking care of the patient. You have to then deliver this information to other nurses when you leave so what if you're on day shift and you get a report from the hospital you're about to leave you want to make sure you give evening shift the person who's taking in that person's the person who's taking in the admission and really doing the, the paperwork for that patient you want to give them as much information as possible because you might not be able to call back that hospital and talk to the same nurse remember they might be gone so you want to get as much as you can from that conversation and i just want to go back real quick i'm sorry if i'm rushing I'm like my kids i gotta get them to bed i'm trying to do this at the same time but anyways um, you want to make sure that you ask the nurse, like right at the beginning of the call, I say, Hey, what's your name? Oh, you're Amber. Can I go ahead and get your number just in case we're disconnected? It's very important because for some reason you tend to get disconnected from these nurses, you know, or there's something you forgot to ask. You want to know how you can get a hold of them really quickly. Okay. So ask that right at the start of your admission. I meant to put that at the beginning, but anyways, so what did I say? Kindness. I'm sorry. I don't have any notes. I'm just talking off the riff y'all cognitive status how do they transfer um pain level what does their skin look like have they had a bm how do they eat um and of course any questions pertaining to their diagnosis so for example they said the person has a foley it's 15 french foley da, 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 da. you can say have you all been flushing it you know is it draining well yada 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 they say oh the patient's diabetic you know like oh are you all giving them side and scale insulin yes we are yada 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 um, how does the patient eat? Are they compliant with their diabetes? Things like that you want to know so you know how to approach that patient and give them the care that they need because you're still dealing with the person. So if you know as much about that person as possible, you know how to approach them. And if this is not making sense, it will the more that you do it. But you know how it is when you're about to like meet somebody, you be like, okay, like, you know, how is she? Like, is she cool? Like, yeah, she cool. She funny. Like, she cool people. It's like, you want to get an idea of them so you know how to approach them you know that that's just how i am i don't know about y'all but that's how i am with people so um that's that um what else do you want to know so you want to get as much as you can you see how long that was just talking about the report get as much as you can about that patient so also you want to know the eta their estimated time of arrival those they're going to say oh i'm probably going to be leaving um calling for an ambulance in about an hour or whatever to send them out okay that way you can talk to your cnas as soon as you know you have an admission Talk to your CNAs. Talk to your CMT. Hey, you all, we have an admission coming in such and such room. Because you'd be surprised, like I said. More than likely, your facility is going to be lazy. With, I don't know. Can somebody tell me why these facilities take forever to let you know you have an admission? Forever. Like, that person is like 30 minutes away. And they're like, oh, such and such is coming. Like, what? You could have told me this at the top of the hour, okay? You could have told me this as soon as I came in the building. But anywho, I digress. Um, but let your CNAs know because they have work they're doing. They might have 12, 14, 15, 20 patients. They want to know, okay, how do I structure my work so that I can be productive today and get things done? If I have a whole other human being coming in that I have nothing, to, I don't know anything about them, that changes the dynamics of my shift. So you want to make sure you let your CNAs know as soon as possible because sometimes the rooms aren't even clean. The bed is not made. I can't tell you how many times we have an admission and the person who's doing admissions will come down and be like, why is this bed not made? And the A is like, I didn't even know if I had an admission. Like, what are you talking about? Like, why are you grilling me? Talk to maintenance. Talk to somebody else. Like, y'all should have made sure this room was okay before you even sent this person up in here. Don't come to me with this. And I, I can't get mad at the A because they're taking care of all the rest of their patients, you know? So 
that's that that's that's a whole other video honey it's a whole other video so make sure you tell your cnas and your cmts as well that they have patients coming in okay so that's that um let's see i'm gonna be honest sometimes you have more than one admission coming this is one of the reasons why i just was like when we it was one night it was me and another nurse kid you not we had five i repeat five admissions coming five admissions on top of all the other patients we had we had like 25 patients each granted we had a cmt but we're still on the med a floor you have to chart on all these patients that a lot of them have wounds they're very very needy i don't mean to say it in a disrespectful way but more than likely if you're on that med a floor them patients are on those lights they are aware of what's going on and they want this that and the third and they want it right now um, it's they're very needy. They need your assistance. They just came from the hospital. They're very mobile. Some of them or some of them they can't move. Some of them, you know, you got a lot going on, on your med floors, your rehab floors. So it was I can't oh I remember the nurse told so you to call her, but yeah, it was me and her. We was like, somebody need to come help us. So nobody of course nobody everybody in the management wants to decide to leave. We called around to other nurses like, hey, we got five admissions. Can y'all come help us? It was it was ridiculous. Like five admissions on top of other patients it was i don't get what these nursing homes be doing man it'd be ridiculous but whew, i feel like i've been talking forever i'll be back yeah i gotta put these kids in bed i'll be right back okay okay